Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, this is the EU US edition, and today is February 15th. Uh, at this point in time, we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Chris Stern is joining us. Thanks to Chris. Uh, it's very late for Chris, so thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, on the agenda today, we've got the DevOps Dozen Award announcement. Uh, just a couple notes on FOSDEM. Again, we just got back uh, on the 5th, so um, still pretty fresh there. Uh, contributor Spotlight updates, the Jenkins Community Awards, uh, an updated Pride logo from Alexander Brandis, uh, the next LTS release, the Ch weekly release as well, uh, some notes on Google Summer of Code 2024, uh, and then just uh, recapping some previous discussions we've been having, uh, the Maven and Python tutorial revamps uh, that now include Docker Compose, the related pages uh, when reaching a 404 error, um, the Pomerium, Pomerium, yeah, reverse proxy guide. I still can't say that word properly sometimes. Uh, password reset guide for admins, uh, and then the version documentation site for Jenkins.io and the sponsor attributes. Um, so yeah, uh, pretty full lineup there. And uh, yeah, we have if we run into anything, we'll be sure to add it in. So uh, starting at the top again, so Jenkins was announced as the winner of the DevOps Dozen Award for Most Innovative DevOps Open Source Project. Um, thanks to Alyssa Tong for getting us involved in this and organizing and um, yeah, just getting us mentioned or getting us to be part of this. Um, Jenkins ended up with uh, a third of all votes, which is an incredible amount, um, if not more. So um, really fantastic to see the support there from the uh, open source community as a whole uh, and thanks again for um, all the all the support fosdom uh, happened on the third and fourth of february we also had the jenkins contributor summit the day prior on the second uh, which was really fantastic we got a lot of great uh, networking and uh, face to face um, just brainstorming project work everything it was just a really lovely experience that resulted in um, work that could not have been uh, done as easily otherwise. Uh, for instance, Basil Crow and uh, Tim Jacome. Uh, there's several other people that were at the comp the contributor summit. Um, that it's it's really hard. It's a global uh, community, so being in the same time zone is really difficult for a lot of folks. Being able to sync. Um, in person is really, really valuable. So just having that opportunity, um, having that oper the the experience there uh, is just super, super valuable. Uh, FOSDEM as a conference was really great. We had lots of visitors to the Jenkins booth. We sold out of most shirts the first day, um, thanks to Cloud Bees for donating the t-shirts that ended up uh, equaling out to over $900. That's gonna go into the Jenkins project. So that's great news. Uh, and thanks to Cloud Bees as well for donating all the stickers. Um, I think we only had a couple, like a, a pile of stickers compared to the eight or 10 that we brought. So again, lots of interest coming there. And then uh, I'm working on a recap uh, of the Contributor Summit and paused them now. Um, I'll be checking in with the rest of the community team, getting some thoughts from others um, and sharing experiences, but that'll, that's to come. Excuse me. Uh, next up, so the Contributor Spotlight. We just published Valentin Delay last week. Um, Valentin was also at the Contributor Summit, so it was really great to meet him in person. Uh, and then, so Tim Jacome is currently slated for the next Contributor Spotlight, and then we've got the next couple of months planned out at this point. Um, I just have to get the pull request submitted for the other contributors, so um, thanks to the collaboration that I've gotten from them, that shouldn't be too large of a task. I just need to convert what I have into an ADOC file and get the pull request submitted. Uh, next up, so the Jenkins Community Awards. So this is uh, this was announced uh, just a couple weeks ago at the end of January. Uh, Alyssa Tong wrote a nice blog post, and within the blog post are links for the three individual awards. So most valuable Jenkins contributor, advocate, and security MVP. Uh, nominations are open until the nineteenth, so there's still some time there to nominate someone if you feel that they are uh, they fit the the description. Uh, and voting will uh, open on February 22nd, and they'll, that'll be open for a month until Friday, March 22nd, at which point it will be closed. And then the winners will be announced at CDCon 2024, just like they were last year. 
uh, things to note uh, is that the previous year's winner cannot win again this year. So last year, uh, Jan Farachik won for Most Valuable Jenkins Contributor. Uh, this year, Jan is not eligible. Uh, however, uh, Jan would still be eligible for something like Most Valuable Jenkins Advocate. Uh, you just can't win the same category. So, uh, and just like last year as well, uh, the nominations are all coming into the uh, issues here in GitHub that we've opened up. Uh, and then we're going off stuff like the uh, reactions and support that each nomination gets. And the uh, CDF Community Awards also have a bunch of different ones as well. So they have one specifically for CDF and other projects. If you have other questions on any of those, uh, again, each issue has its own uh, description of the award and you can always reach out to Alyssa, myself, anyone else on the community team who can help get you more information on that. Uh, just, uh, we noted this last week, but I just, I like it so much that I want to bring it this week again. Um, thanks to Alexander Brandes for, again, for providing an updated pride logo. Um, we went, we just, uh, added some more inclusivity there. So just really great, really nice to see. Um, thanks again to Alex for putting that together and submitting that. Uh, next week we have LTS 2.440.1 to release. So the next baseline is, uh, ready to go. Uh, thanks to Alexander Brandes for being the release lead on this uh, and setting up the checklist and seeing things through. Um, I've created the pull request for the changelog and upgrade guide entries. So that is available. I'd love to get any other reviews that we can get there. Um, Mark, thanks to Mark for helping me with the upgrade guide. We've got some notes in there about the node monitors uh, configuration uh, for uh, configuration as code. And uh, there was another update. I forget about what exactly the other upgrade guide entry was for. I want to say um, I had something to do. Yeah, the disk space monitor. Um, or the uh, the latest, for the remoting update was the other one that was uh, included. So, um, so yeah, everything looks good there. Uh, the release candidate was a bit, uh, made available last week. So Mark's, been, Mark's testing from that looks good so far. So uh, we're in a good spot. Uh, uh, any if there's any weird things that come up or anything preventing the release, um, you know, we'll deal with it. But at this point in time, everything looks nice and clear and ready to go for next week. Uh, this week we had uh, the weekly 2.445 release. So that went through. Um, we didn't, I don't think there were any issues for this weekly release. I know we've been having uh, some issues in the last weekly release that have been resolved, but um, everything went pretty smoothly this week. So hopefully that continues from here on out. Uh, the next step on the agenda, so Google Summer of Code 2024 prep is uh, ongoing. Um, so uh, first and foremost, just thanks to Chris uh, Stern for the work on updating the project pages, documentation, everything overall for GSOC. Uh, everything looks good. Everything's really nicely organized and uh, looks just, yeah, everything's looking really, really good there. Um, the application for the uh, for Jenkins has been bleh. The organization application for Jenkins has been submitted to Google. So we're just waiting to hear back from them. And uh, yeah, we're Alyssa, uh, thanks to Alyssa for getting us subscribed and tied into GSOC a little bit closer. And then uh, next, so um, next week on the 21st, there's plans for a Jenkins online meetup. And um, yeah, uh, Chris, would you, be okay providing some details or just, is there anything you want to note about uh, Google Summer of Code that we haven't discussed or that I didn't bring up? Um, yeah, it seems like we have like further, um, like a uh, short list of some projects we want to focus on. So that, that wouldn't be all 11 of them. Um, but I think we're going to drop at least two of them at, the, at this stage if we get selected and um, that's that that means that we have nine projects in total mm -hmm. yeah and i think yeah. like um for like um uh, regarding the mentors teams like so like we have currently like, we kind of have i think 11 people on to it but it looks like we um we uh we have to work with those so it's like um so i'm thinking like um 
like we didn't we didn't discuss today but um i kind of think like that might limit the capacity of like uh, how many projects we could submit to google if uh if jenkins would get selected and we'll go ahead and we receive applications and we have to choose like a number of people so um that might be a constricting factor is one right now because like i think like even for the 11 of them like oh maybe only 10 are active so but among the 10 like i'm pretty sure that it would be um like uh, quite dedicated to the project some past experience and uh, that's a yeah awesome but, thank you so much yeah, but is it okay if I if I if I uh talk a little bit about the GSOC twenty twenty three uh, uh building um Jenkins IO project a little bit? As yeah, yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. Let's uh, um yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like right. I think Vin did uh Vin did start working on it again. I I have yet to because he's on holidays until the eighteenth. I think maybe around, mm -hmm. around that time. Uh, so it's like I will during this time I uh, review his pull request to add some features to the Gatsby side of the site, and we may move more of them, like the features from uh, from the Entoy um, side to the Gatsby side, because simply because like some some of them are not versioned, and we uh, fare better if we put them on the Gatsby, uh, both for logic and also for maybe aesthetics, because it, it, it looks, it's, it's easier to, um, to style with uh, Gatsby, I think, because like for Intor, um, they have um, they have a very uh, more rigid way to do things for like a presentation for the pages. So um, I think it's like for if we don't need to to do it for the documentation, we we could like uh, use some more like um, flexibility and customization React can offer us to do. Uh, the rest of the pages. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Um, that, no, that, that all sounds great, Chris. And I think that makes sense. Um, yeah. And I know uh, Bundy had reached out to me about a couple of issues that I had raised um, just to make sure that they're all, they are in fact all set. So I've been uh, going back and reviewing some of that stuff myself. So um yeah no that's great great to hear thank you very very much for all the updates and and uh insight on that really that's really nice to hear um and then i think uh i need to well i want to have this discussion off docs office hours just because um when i was at fosdom i was talking with the jenkins security team and they had some questions about uh security advisory page generation and like just what their process looks like now versus what it might look like with Fantora Gatsby. So okay. uh, I still need to sit down with uh, Daniel Beck, who was the one that actually raised their concerns. Um, okay. And I, just to like better understand what that process looks like for them at the moment, because they said they're using, uh, they're relying on a lot of the, the framework basically of the security advisories page to generate and they're plugging things in and, um, yeah, so so basically, I need to sit down with Daniel Beck and get a little bit more clarity on what their process looks like. And then uh, what I would like to do is find some time for us to um, connect and talk about, like, just talk through it. Like, I can share what Daniel Beck has shown me and shared with me and what their concerns are. And we can talk about what um, that might look like from the other side of the with the version doc site and kind of go from there. Um, yeah, because that be uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Maybe after after this meeting. Um, so I have to, so I would like to, I want to talk to Daniel Beck first because okay, yeah, um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what their process looks like. And I want to have that. I want to know how that works for them before we start talking about it. Cause I, uh, I, I it's not going to be a fruitful conversation if I don't know what they're doing exactly. Yeah, it makes sense. But, um, uh, actually I did try to like convert, um, the old version from, um, from Wallstruck to uh, to Entor, but that wasn't very successful because we only we could only get the get the the, the old version done because like um I think you probably know it like they have an old version of doing things and yeah. new version of doing things. So the old version was kind of easy, but the new version is kind of hard to do. So also for the advisories page, like the the page with all the advisories, we may need to 
uh, we, we uh, so after 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 my attempts, we've decided uh, to do it on Gatsby. So like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's like, um, but uh, the thing is that um, we have to figure out like what the um, security team wants to do too. So it's like, um, but I think it's it will be more or less like um, we had before because like we we uh, we can still have like a dog. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, we can try to imitate what we had uh, existing okay. in the like uh, Austrian version, and that may be easier for the security team. I think. Yeah. So that their main concern was making sure that they can get the advisories out clearly and efficiently, and and so and um, make sure that everything is linked and, and aligned properly, like they do now. Um, okay. And I figured that it would be through Gatsby since I think it's more of a generated page than it is a static page at that point. Okay. Um, so that all makes sense to me in that regard. Um, so yeah, so let so let me because I already have as an action item for myself to sit down with Daniel and the security team and just like get that perspective and that and that workflow from them um, because I think I think that there is a real chance that the process isn't terribly different for them um, provided we can give them the like a framework that makes sense for them to use or something like that so um, okay. yeah i think all that makes total sense and i think that aligns with what i had in uh in mind when i was talking to the security team as well so i'm glad to hear that it at least lines up with what you're saying um, but yeah, let me let me talk with Daniel. Let me find a time to sit down with him, and he can walk me through their their process there. And then once I get that fi figured out, we'll I'll we'll we'll connect, and then we can go from there with our conversation. Yeah, sure. Maybe we could. Um, I'm not sure about availability, but we may may be able to invite Lend it at the same time. It's yeah. Funny. Um. So Daniel's based in, I want to say Germany. Okay. So, um that might actually work out because I think that would be more in line with your and Van Deet's timelines. And I can always just show up earlier if needed. Yeah. Um, okay. So, okay. yeah. So I, I don't think that would be a problem. Maybe that's even like the conversation we have after I meet with Daniel Beck, that, that might be something that we can do too. Um, yeah. Cause I would love to make sure that everyone's involved as much as possible. Um, I'm kind of, doing... I'm probably like, um, Vendi may not be available because I, I, I tried like meeting up with him, but he has like, he seems to be quite um, busy most of the time because of his studies and maybe because of other things, his earlier commitments in his life. So yeah. if he can be there, I'll just represent us. Yeah. And that, and that works too. And, uh, and, you know, worst case scenario, the whole thing, uh, I'll make sure we record the whole thing. So we have that, that Vendi could then look to and look at and like watch when he has time and we'll have that for after the fact as well so um sure. yeah we can definitely make all this work we can definitely get connected and, and talk through all these things that's not a problem yep. okay so yeah no perfect thank you very very much chris i really appreciate you um be, being flexible and stuff and uh just being available to to work on this stuff so thank you yep. you're welcome Great. So lots of uh, exciting news there on the version doc stuff. Um, we did have to delay it a little bit just due to Azure cost saving measures and making sure that uh, we're on top of that properly. That is a, a priority right now for the Jenkins team as a whole. The Jenkins project is making sure that our costs are down. Um, so once that's under control, we'll get back to this. But uh, hopefully by then we'll have a better plan of what to do with uh, some of these other pieces of the Jenkins that IO site. So. Okay, uh, so uh, next up, so the Maven, the Maven and Python tutorial, uh, they've both been revamped. They now have Docker Compose uh, integrated into their instructions. Um, so thanks to Bruno Vrachten for incorporating Docker Compose into the tutorials. It's really fantastic. Um, the Node.js tutorial is uh, next for the update. I think it's being worked on right now. Uh, more to come on that. And then uh, the eventual goal there is to use Docker Compose in the install the Docker installation docs. Um, so uh, again, something that uh, this is not necessarily something that would be production level ready, um, but for Docker Compose in the installation docs in the tutorial docs is really fantastic. It helps clean up a lot of the 
uh, work that needs to be done by allowing you to configure a file that then uses just the Docker Compose up call to uh, configure and run. So um, a lot cleaner, a lot more simple, and uh, a lot more secure than using something like the Docker in Docker, which is what we currently have uh, as instructions. So um, all positives there. And uh, yeah, I'll partner up with Bruno to take a look at the installation docs once he's finished with the tutorials. And uh, we will go from there with the next steps after that. Uh, a pull request that we had talked about a couple of times previously is um, an, an addition from a new contributor, Sridhar. Uh, so they've created, uh, they've done this work to now um, when there is a 404 page, uh, instead of just getting a useless 404 page or a page that doesn't help in any sense of, uh, hey, were you looking for something like this? Um, if you end up on this 404 page and go into the search box, you can actually get um, hits that are related to what you were searching for or what you were trying to get to. So um, this is really nice. This helps uh, navigation for users a lot and hopefully will lead to better user experiences for when they are running into those events where they don't find something. Um, so again, thanks to Shridhar for, for their work on that and uh, adding that to the, um, the 404 page. Next up, so there was uh, a recent addition, or recent um, back in November from uh, a Pomerium, uh, you, uh, someone that works on Pomerium. Uh, they provided the reverse proxy guide. And uh, while it provided some good information, the full set of instructions was uh, on is, is on their site. Uh, so we asked, or I reached out and asked if they'd be interested in providing the full instructions for the Jenkins documentation. Uh, they were receptive and have submitted a pull request for just that. Um, so now uh, we have the full uh, Pomerium, Pomerium reverse proxy configuration guide here. Uh, I need to go through review it and make sure everything's good to go there, but um, I've already looked at their site and their version of the documentation looks really nice. Uh, everything's clean and everything, uh, it, it looks really good there. So uh, I'm not worried too, too much about that side. Um, then just thank you very, very much again to Pomerium for their support, the collaboration and providing the documentation. Uh, there was another pa uh, pull request submitted recently about the password reset process for admins. Um, so this is fantastic. I've gone through here, all the steps look like they work. Um, this is a updated an updated version of a previous uh, pull request that was submitted uh, to document the password reset for admins process. Uh, however, it needed a lot of changes. This is the updated version of those changes. Um, so everything looks pretty good here. Like I said, I tested the steps, everything seemed to work. Um, it was not specific to my use case, but I'm on a Mac, so um, my commands are a little different, but uh, I know that and was able to work around that accordingly. Uh, everything else is good to go and it makes sense and works. So I think at the end of the day that that's um, you know, not the most important thing in the world to worry about. So um, thanks very much to uh, Bervianto for providing this. Really nice to see. And uh, yeah, just another great, another new, new contributor uh, adding some work. Oh, I think it's all oh, because he's uh, his mentor for GSOC. Oh, cool. That's even that's even better. So uh, yeah, he's very visible. Oh, fantastic! Then even better. Um, Brivianto is actually a GSOC ad, uh, mentor. Really cool. Look at all these certifications. Yeah, so that's that's great. That's great news. Glad to have uh, glad to have him on board. Yep. Cool. Uh, and then uh, last thing on the agenda I have for today is just the sponsor attribution page. Um, again, this has been an ongoing uh, project that we've uh, been discussing since last year. JFrog asked if they could be attributed as a sponsor for the Jenkins project. We said, yes, absolutely. That makes sense. Uh, and then that led to more discussion of how do we set up sponsors? What kind of levels do we have? Um, what are the categories of sponsorship or different ways people can sponsor the project, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a pretty solid list of what that list is gonna look like. Um, 
Basil Crows created a draft pull request that has an example of the page. Um, the, there's a handful of levels that everyone seems to be okay with in terms of how those are separated. Um, and it's all, you know, these are all based on a monetary uh, sort of status, but at the end of the day, there's many different ways to, to support and uh, sponsor Jenkins. So um, while it may not be direct money, money value that they're sponsoring us with, um, providing, you know, mirrors, providing servers, providing services and um, all sorts of stuff is hugely invaluable to Jenkins as a, as a project. So uh, their contributions and their sponsorships are just as important there um, than just uh, someone donating uh, uh, monetary value. Um, on that note, Red Hat ha is no longer part of the CD Foundation, so uh, they are not a sponsor of Jenkins any longer. They've been removed from the Jenkins homepage. Uh, you can see down here. So I uh, still have great sponsors there. And then uh, Oracle is still in the process of, uh, or we had asked about Oracle donations. I think we need to remove them if we don't get anything from them. Um, and then AWS has just recently donated 60000 uh, dollars to Jenkins um, for like server usage and just credits. So like that's amazing. Thank you so much to uh, AWS for their do for their donation there. Uh, that's just that's uh, some weight off our shoulders. So fantastic. Uh, and then DigitalOcean has also donated for both 2023 and 2024. So again, really great to hear. Thanks to DigitalOcean for their continued sponsorship. Uh, and then uh, again, all of these will be part of the new sponsor page. So everyone will be attributed. Everyone will have uh, their logo and images on the page. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll have that ready for everyone. Um, Basil's uh, enjoying Europe a little bit longer after post FOSDEM. Uh, and then, yeah, it'll be something that we discuss in the governance meetings uh, going forward. So great. Um, so that brings us to the end of the agenda. And so, uh, Chris, is there anything else you wanted to throw out, talk about, discuss today, or do, did we cover everything for you? I think we covered everything. Okay, great. So then, um, so I'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment here. Um, thank you, as always, for joining. Take care. If you have questions, feel free to reach out via community.jenkins.io. Uh, anywhere on GitHub that we're in, in the project uh, or anything else, by all means. And uh, yeah, so, um, oh, uh, one last note, and I don't know this for sure because I haven't talked to Mark today, but because Mark's out of office, I don't believe there will be um, Doc's office hours this evening for Asia. It's still on the calendar, so there's a chance it could be. Um, I'm not going to cancel that myself, but just throwing it out there that there may not be a doc's office hours later. Okay. But you're here now, Chris. So it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, outside of that to everyone, take care. Thanks again for coming. We'll see you next week. Uh, and yeah. Stay take safe. Care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.